What's up guys, Perry from Rockville here, and today I'm gonna show you how to set up the RockSpot 260W moving head spotlight. The light comes in two different colors of black and white, but no matter what color it is, the setup is the exact same. As you can see, it comes with the light itself, a power cable to power the light, an antenna, a mounting bracket, and a safety cable. So one of the first things you can do to set up the light is take the antenna and screw that onto the front of the light here. And this is gonna optimize the signal between your light and your wireless DMX controller or second light. So you can use the rubber feet on the bottom of your light to place your light onto any surface or floor. And you can also place it across the room so that the projections of the light hit the wall or ceiling. You can also use the included mounting bracket to set your light up to a truss. To do that, you can lay your light down just like this. And then you'll see these two holes here on the bottom of your light. So you're gonna take your mounting bracket here and line up the two grooves on the bottom of the bracket to the holes here on the bottom of your light. Once it's lined up, you're gonna push these knobs in like this and twist it to the right, and then the mounting bracket will be secured to the light. Now to mount the light onto your truss, you're gonna take a lighting clamp here, like our very own LC70. You're gonna remove the bottom bolt here of the clamp, run it through the hole in the middle of your mounting bracket on the bottom of your light, then take the lighting clamp and screw it onto the bolt. From there, we're gonna loosen the butterfly screw here so that there's enough space to fit onto your truss. Then you can take the light and line the clamp up to a spot on your truss you want to mount the light, and then tighten the butterfly screw to secure the light onto your truss. You can also attach the safety cable for extra security. So now let's go ahead and power on our light and go through all the different features. Now there are a few different menus we can go through here to set up our light. Now we're gonna use these buttons here next to the display to go through all of the different settings for our light. The end button will help us get back to the menu or to the previous page. We can use the up and down buttons to go through all of the different settings or pages and the E button to go into any of these menus or save our changes. So the first menu here is the address menu and this is what we're gonna wanna use to set the light up to our DMX controller. So while we're in this setting, I can press the down button until we see the square around this number here and then I can press enter and then from there I can use the up and down buttons to go through the different DMX addresses. So after we found a DMX address, we can press enter to save our changes. From there, we can use the previous and next buttons to go between different DMX groups of 14, which is useful for setting up groups of lights to a DMX controller. Next, we have the mode menu where we can set the light into different modes. So first we have the DMX control mode, which is what we're gonna wanna have engaged when we set the light up to a secondary light or to a DMX controller. Next, we have the auto run mode where the light will go in between different projections. We have the sound control mode where the light will interact with any sound picked up by the light. We have the scene mode where the light will go between the scenes set up on the light. And then we have the master slave choose mode where we can set the light either to master, slave, or auto detect mode. We also have the display menu where we can adjust the display of the light itself. So with this, we can adjust the screen saver, flip the rotation of the display, adjust the brightness, and much more. Next, we have the scene menu where we can fine tune each scene that's built into the light. So with the scene select, you can switch between which scene you want to adjust. From there, you can adjust the timing of each scene, the control mode for the scene, the pan and tilt of the scene, and the timing of the pan and tilt, the strobe, dimmer, color, and so much more. Next, we have the advanced menu where we can adjust these settings like inverting the pan or tilt, the pan and tilt rectify, the pan offset, and much more. And lastly, we have the stat menu where we can review the status of the light. Now, if we want to have more control over our lights, we can set them up to a DMX controller. So to start with this setup, we're gonna go to the address menu for each light. And from here, we can set the DMX address. So for today, we're gonna use 001. You can change this by using the up and down buttons until you see the blue square around the number here. And if you press enter, you can then use the up and down buttons to switch between the different DMX addresses. So like I said, we're gonna use 001 and press enter to save the change. Next, we're gonna go to the mode menu on each light and we're gonna wanna set each light to DMX control mode. And then we're gonna go all the way down to the master slave choose and press enter until they read they're on slave mode. So once that's all set up, we're gonna set the wireless DMX code for each light with this button right above this LED here. So the more we press it, the more colors we get to select. 
So we're gonna press this button for today until we get to the red LED. Next, we're gonna power on our wireless DMX controller, and we're also gonna wanna make sure that it's set to the same wireless DMX code as well. Again, for today, we're gonna set it to red. Now, as soon as I do that, you'll see that the DMX code LED on the controller is flashing red for master mode, and the DMX code LEDs on my lights are flashing green for slave mode. Lastly, we're gonna activate scanner one on the controller, and now we can go through each fader and see what they do for our lights. So starting with fader one, this will control the X axis for the light. Then fader two will control the Y axis for the light. Next, we have fader three, which will fine tune the X axis. So you'll see when we do that, that the X axis on the light will move very, very slightly. Fader four does the same exact thing for the Y axis. We can use fader five to adjust the speed of how quickly the X or Y axis moves. So if I raise that up a bit and move my light with fader one or two, it goes a little slower than before. Now fader six will control the strobe for the light and it will have a different effect on the strobe depending on where we set it. So for example, if we set this fader anywhere from 128 to 191, it will produce the pulse strobe mode from slow to fast. You can always tell which value you're setting your fader to by looking at the LED screen on your controller. Now you won't see the strobe coming through unless you raise fader seven, which is the overall dimmer for the light. So the more I raise this fader, the brighter the LED is for your light. Also keep in mind for Fader 6 that value 0 to 3 is a blackout mode for the strobe so nothing will happen. Next we have Fader 8 where we can set the colors for our light. Again you can raise Fader 7 to control the overall brightness. And if you want to have a full blast of color you can raise Fader 6 all the way up. So now if we raise Fader 8 we can go through all of the different colors available. Next we have Fader 9 where we can adjust the first gobo or the shape of our light. And then we have fader 10 for the second gobo or the shape within the first shape. Next to that we have fader 11 which changes the rotation for the second gobo. And then we have fader 12 for the prism rotation. Next we have fader 13 to control the focus of the projection. And lastly we have fader 14 to control the function. From value 0 to 249 the light will function as normal. And then from values 250 to 255 the lights will reset after 5 seconds. You can also set up just one of your lights to your controller wired and have it control the other lights in your chain wirelessly. So for that setup, we're gonna set up this light here to our controller with a DMX cable. I'm gonna take the male end and plug it into the DMX out of my controller. Then I'm gonna take the other end and plug it into the DMX in on the first light. Next, we're gonna go into the mode menu and set it to DMX control mode. Then we're gonna go all the way to the bottom to the master choose section and press the enter button until it reads master. You'll also wanna be sure to go into the address section and set it to the DMX address you want it set to. For today, we're setting it to 001. So now for all the other lights you have set up in your chain, you're gonna go into the mode menu here. Make sure that it's select to the DMX control mode, then go all the way down to the master slave choose and press enter until they read slave mode. From here, you're also gonna wanna make sure to set your lights to the same wireless DMX code. For today, we're gonna use red, and then you'll see as soon as you do that that the master light is flashing red, while the slave light is flashing green. So to summarize here, my first light is taking control from my wired DMX controller, while the slave lights follow the light that's connected to my DMX controller. So now as soon as I do anything for my first light, you'll see that the slave light will also follow. This is handy if you have a wired DMX console with your lights, but still wanted to save on bringing DMX cables since we only really need one for this setup. You can also set up all of your lights to your DMX controller through DMX cables. So I can take one DMX cable and plug the male end into the DMX out on my controller, then plug the other end into the DMX in on my first light. Then to connect my first light to the next light, I can take another DMX cable, plug the male end into the DMX out on my first light, then plug the other end into the DMX in on the next light. And you're gonna repeat this process all the way down for however many lights you wanna have set up. Lastly, you're gonna wanna go into the mode menu for each light and make sure to set it to DMX control, then go all the way to the bottom for the master slave choose. And from here, you can either set them up to slave or auto mode because the lights will automatically know that they're set up to the DMX controller through the DMX cables. You also won't need to worry about the wireless DMX code since we're not using wireless DMX. And now as soon as I use my controller, 
you'll see that the lights will follow. Now say you wanted to have control over your lights, but you didn't want to use a DMX controller, you can always sync your lights together using the master slave function. So for this setup, I'm gonna take my DMX cable, I'm gonna plug the male end into the DMX out for the first light of my chain, then I'm gonna take the other end and plug it into the DMX in on the next light. And then you'll just repeat this process all the way down the chain for however many lights you wanna have set up. Next, you're gonna go to the mode menu on the first light of your chain and go all the way down to the master choose section and press enter until it reads master. Next, you're gonna go to the mode menu on the remaining lights of your chain, set it to the DMX control mode, and then you can go all the way to the bottom to the master choose section and set it to either slave or auto mode. So now to test to see if it's working, I'm gonna go to the mode menu on my master light set it to auto run mode, and then you'll see that the slave lights will follow the master light. We can also set up the master slave function for our lights wirelessly. So hopefully this showed you guys how easy it is to set up your Rockspot 260W moving head spotlights. But of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. As always, I'm Perry from Rockville, and we'll see you guys next time.